What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials may vary for you depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may to be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode and today we're going to take a look at Roma yes the Italian side playing in the Serie A Roma Roma are a four and a half star team and last year in the Serie A finished in second place runners up to only Juventus of course this season they were knocked out in the Champions League round of 16 by Real Madrid and also were knocked out in the Coppa Italia round of 16 as well they were managed by Rudy Garcia but mid-season he was sacked and now Luciano Spalletti's taken over for I do believe his second term at the club I'm sure Roma fans can correct me if that's wrong but I'm pretty sure it's his second term managing Roma and yeah Roma a four and a half star team a pretty decent side but this is quite a challenging team to do a career mode with and I'll explain the reasons why as we get through the introduction here now as you look at their squad it's it's okay it's pretty decent there are some good players in there there's some young talent as well a couple of decent players loaned out too and of course you've got the main man Totti as well uh, the long serving Francesco Totti in your side as well uh, you start off with a budget of £24.5 million which isn't the biggest of course with boosts and pre-season tournaments too that could become bigger but £24.5 million not really a big budget and you've got quite a few players who have their contracts up coming at the end of the year as well some big ones too such as Keita and Totti and Mykon as well now there are three players I recommend giving contracts to uh, of course Francesco Totti because despite his age just watching him you know go into the free agents pool you know you just can't do that I'm afraid so you've got to give them a new contract uh, also Paredes as well and possibly uh, Politano now Politano only has 76 potential so maybe not worthwhile but Paredes definitely as he's got 82 potential with players like Michael and Cato though I recommend just selling them and getting a bit of money for them as well now their objectives are to qualify for the Champions League in the Serie A and in the Champions League they want you to reach the quarter final stages and in the Coppa Italia they want you to reach the semi-final stage Ages. So three pretty strong aims from the Roma board when you take over in the first season. Of course, do keep in mind as well in the Serie A, the top three teams qualify for the Champions League, not top four sides like in other major European leagues. So it's only the first, second and third places that qualify for next year's Champions League. But yeah, for the Champions League, uh, they want you to reach the quarterfinal stages, a pretty tough aim. And for a Coppa Italia as well, they want you to reach the semi-final stages. And of course, both of these aims in real life, if you will, haven't been met this year due to them getting knocked out in both the round of 16 stages for the Champions League league and also the Coppa Italia as well so some tough aims and the squad as you saw isn't too bad but my number one target with Roma though is to look for a new goalkeeper now of course you've got Szczesny who's currently on loan from Arsenal right now so he's going to be here for a year and then he's going to go back to the Emirates Stadium you've got the Sanctis who is 37 years old 38 years old even at 77 overall for me I would look to buy a new goalkeeper who could be your number one for many years to come and my number one target is this guy right here Matthew Perrine of Genoa who starts off 81 overall and has 88 potential although I do want to keep in mind that that might have decreased on the latest update in fact I'm pretty sure it has done by a couple of ratings but when I did this uh, video uh, he was uh, 88 potential so Perrine uh, starts off 81 overall and still has some pretty decent potential regardless as a 21 year old goalkeeper 22 year old goalkeeper sorry very very talented now the only problem with Perrine is that he may cost you quite a bit of money he's an ideal replacement for the Sanctis he's a talent Liam he's also only 22 years old so got many many great years ahead of him and of course should grow pretty nicely too but Genoa won't really want to let him go unless they get a really big bid for him and that's not a real surprise he's an extremely talented young goalkeeper he's targeted by a lot of European clubs and if you want to bring him to the Stadio Olimpico you may have to pay a bit of a premium so the deal we negotiated with Genoa was in the end I think it was 18 million pounds plus the Sanctis and that's quite a lot of money when you add a 77 overall goalkeeper to him as well but I think Perrine is an absolute monster in FIFA 16. You'll see his stats in just a moment's time. He's got 90 for reflexes to begin with, which is 22 years old. So as the years go by and he increases in his overall, he increases his stats. Just imagine what his reflex stat could get to in the near future. He's got some great goalkeeping stats to begin with. And again, a really, really good long-term replacement for De Sanctis. And with Chesney as well, don't forget, he's a, he's a more than competent goalkeeper, but he's only here on loan from Arsenal. He's not your goalkeeper, he's Arsenal's goalkeeper. They've given him to you for a 
year. He's not yours. And yeah, I would definitely recommend getting a new number one in for the future. And Perrine would be my number one target. So it'll cost you around £18 million pounds plus the Sanctus. So you may be pushing £20 million pounds for Perrine. And when you start off with a £24.5 million pound budget, you're spending most of your transfer budget on your goalkeeper. Not a lot of people would want to do that. But as I said a few times before, goalkeepers are just so crucial to a season and they can win you points single-handedly if they're really turning it on in one game. So Perrine, I think is worth the money. And again, when you consider what his potential could be in the future as well, and because training is overpowered for goalkeepers as well in this year's FIFA, I would definitely recommend a new number one and Perrine would be my number one target. Once I've completed that signing, I then look to sign a new left-back for Roma as well. Now, the reason being is quite simple. They've got Lucas Digne playing for them right now, but just like with Chesney on loan from Arsenal playing for Roma, Lucas Digne is on loan from PSG playing for Roma. So Lucas Digne isn't actually Roma's permanent left-back. He plays for the French side PSG. So I'd recommend signing a permanent player to play left-back for Roma, and this guy will be my number one target. Now, I signed him in a couple of Huda sign fours before. I really do rate this guy. It's Jose Gaia from Valencia. He starts off at 80 overall, 20 years old, has 87 potential, but just like Perrine, might have potentially taken a potential decrease in the latest update, so do be wary of that. But regardless, he is still a really, really talented young left-back. You may be spending upwards of £13 million on the guy. You may have to spend about £15, £16 million if you're not as lucky as I was. We agreed to deal of £13.5 million, though, and I had to wait until I could sell a player as well, so I couldn't afford to pay for his wage increase that he was asking for, so I had to sell Keita, get rid of his 40 grand a week salary, and then offer Jose Gaia a new contract, uh, sorry, I should say a wage increase as well. So we give him the 60 grand a week wage increase here. As you can see, we couldn't actually afford to do this because of the uh, the budget. So we had to wait until Cater had been sold, which is really, really frustrating. But anyway, Cater got sold eventually. And then we could uh, we could uh, give Jose Gaia the wage increase he wanted and sign him for Roma. So he will probably want a wage increase. You'll most likely have to give it to him, even if you give him some bonuses too for the clean sheet and also the squad role and length he wants of his contract as well. But regardless, Jose Gaia would be a great choice for the left back role. He'd come in, be your first choice left back for many years to come. And again, because Lucas Digne is only loaned in right now, I would definitely recommend getting a new left back as soon as possible. Because come the end of the season, once Digne goes back, you're only left with Emerson to play left back, who's in the low 70s, I do believe, for overall. So I'd recommend getting a really class one right to begin with, and Gaia as well. As I said before, one of my best targets for a left back in this year's FIFA. He grows really well, starts off at 80 overall to begin with, just 20 years old. Again, got some solid potential as well. He's a really great left back and a really, really good signing. And in my opinion, definitely worth bringing in. So Jose Gaia, I would sign him for around £13.5 million once you sign Perrine as well for around £18 million. So extremely expensive players there, those two. But I would definitely say they'll be worth the money. They're extremely talented in their early 20s and will grow pretty nicely for Roma in the goalkeeper and left-back areas. I'll also loan out some of the young players they have as well on the uh, on the fringes of Roma, if you will. And also try and sign one more player if you have the money as well. I'd recommend getting a new centre-back and Bjorn Engels of Club Bruges will be a really solid choice. He's 20 years old and he has 82 potential. Starts off at 74 overall. Now, I'll just try and swap out one of the centre-backs they have right now. They've got this guy called Zukanovic, who I do believe just signed for Roma, but you can get rid of him in the first transfer window if you want to. He's 28 years old. Starts off at 74 overall himself. He's not a bad squad centre-back, but I'd recommend getting rid of him and getting in someone who's got similar overall with more potential because he's several years younger. So, you may not want to do this because, again, Zukanovic has only just arrived at Roma, I do believe, but for me, he's a 28-year-old centre-back who's not going to grow any ratings, and you're going to sign someone who's going to be on less for wages per week, who's got more potential and starts off at around the same overall anyway. So it's just, you know, it's it's whether you want to do this or not. It's whether you want to put your faith in youngsters or not. I would recommend it, but it's totally up to you if you want to do this or not. But still, Bjorn Engels, I had him in uh, a Torino save. He was all right. He's pretty decent, and again, he grows quite nicely too. So 20 years old, 74 overall, 82 potential. He'll grow all right in your reserves, be a decent first slash fourth choice centre-back and I would say worth signing if you've got the money and you want to prioritise youth over experience. So it'll cost you 10 grand a week less on the wages and again with the potential added as well with uh, being 82, I would definitely say, you know, thinking about the long-term future of Roma, it's worth doing if you've got the money and you want to bring in a younger face for this Roma side. So three signings then, Perrine, Gaia and Engels and you may sit there and say, well you haven't really done much have you and that's true but 
as I showed you in the Atletico Madrid uh, career mode too, you can bring back some players that are currently loaned out from Roma and bring them back to the Stadio Olimpico if you'd like to do so. There are players like Dumbia and I can never pronounce this guy's name. He's the Serbian that plays for Inter right now. Is it Lajic? Lajic? I can never pronounce it properly, but I'm sure you know who, uh, you know who I'm saying here. There's some really decent players who can come in and help out your first team if you want to do so. I could only afford the recall fee of uh, Seydou Dumbia, but still, I'd recommend bringing him back regardless. He's 79 overall, 27 years old, a very decent striker and of course Roma have got Totti who's in his late 30s probably going to retire come the end of the season unless you can get him to sign a new one year extension and they've got Dzeko the Bosnian as well but I still wouldn't mind getting Dumbia back obviously we all know about Dumbia he's insane in FIFA absolutely rapid a good finish on him as well and the Ivorian is definitely worth bringing back to the Stadio Olimpico if you would like another option in the striker role so 33.2 million pounds spent to bring in just three players and again you may be sitting there questioning whether that's the right thing to do well, with Roma, you don't have a big budget. You've only got £24.5 million to begin with. And what you're looking to do is bring in younger players with potential for the future and ship on some of the older players who are on bloated salaries that you don't want to pay for them anymore, such as Mykon, such as Keita, such as De Sanctis. Try and get rid of those players and bring in younger faces to replace those ones that have better potential. I would definitely recommend these three players for a Roma career mode. So Matteo Perin from Genoa for £18 million plus De Sanctis. Gaia for £13.5 million and also so Engels as well for I think it was 1.7 million pounds plus Zukanovic. So yeah, you may not be sitting there thinking these signings are amazing and they're not. I'll be honest, they're not amazing signings, but they're all going to do a pretty decent job for you for many years to come. So those are the three signings I would recommend making for a Roma career mode. And again, the objectives coming to the start of the season were to qualify for the Champions League in the Serie A, to reach the quarterfinal stages of the Champions League and to also reach the semi-final stages of the Coppa Italia. So three pretty strong aims from the Roma board. And this is why I would say that Roma is a challenging career mode team to use because when you don't have the best squad, when you don't have the biggest budget, and when the board are giving you three strong aims as well, you could be up against it in your first season if you're not performing to the level the board want you to with this side, which although four and a half star team isn't bad, isn't exactly the best in Europe either. So when I simulated the end of the season, I was really worried for this one. I was thinking this could you know, be a catastrophic fail on my part and Roma could completely fail all three objectives because they are pretty strong. When well, they met the league objective, they finished in third place, 14 points behind Juventus come the end of the season, but still, qualify for the Champions League, that's what the board wanted. So we met the league objective, pleased with that. We then exceeded the Coppa Italia objective and actually won this competition as well. Really pleased with that. They wanted us to reach the semi-finals. We won it instead, beating Napoli by three goals to two. And I was thinking, oh, in fact, maybe this is going to be fantastic. I've done a really good job. But in the Champions League, this is where everything went wrong. You'll see the tournament tree right here. You're looking, you're scanning. Where's Rome? I can't see Roma's badge. Well, they didn't get into the round of 16 like in real life or the quarterfinals like the board wanted me to. They got knocked out in the group stage and finished in fourth place with two points. And zero wins from six games and only scored three goals. So, yeah, I uh, I didn't really do a good job with that one then, did I? So, the league, yes, we simulated the end of the season and they finished in third place. That's great. Everyone's happy. Coppa Italia, they got silverware this season. They won it. That's fantastic. But the Champions League, I mean, that is just disastrous. I simulated the end of the season. I don't play any games in the suit of sign for. Just simulate all the way through and check and see how they did. And, yeah, the wooden spoon, fourth place. Not even going into the Europa League stages. I mean, their group wasn't exactly easy, but that was an absolute massive failure. That was just awful. So, yeah, I completely failed with that objective, but at least I met the League One, at least I exceeded the Coppa Italia. So, Roma is definitely a challenging career mode team to use, that is for sure. Again, they've got some decent players in here, but a lot of their players are aging. A lot of players have their contracts up in the first couple of seasons. And for the most part, with the board giving you those three strong objectives, you really could be up against it in the first season. And with not a big budget either, it could be quite a tough team to use. So I would definitely say that there are some fun teams to use in career mode and there's some really challenging ones as well. This one could definitely be fun, but from the first season, it could be a really tough challenge. So if you're looking for a challenge in career mode, if you're looking to manage a team in this year's FIFA 16 career mode, you're not entirely sure what team to go with. You're bored of the same old teams. You're not entirely sure you're getting tested to your limit. I would definitely recommend starting with Roma because this was a challenge for me to sign some good players with the small budget, try and improve their team and 
and also meet those three objectives as well. But that is going to end today's episode of Who to Sign For as well, guys. So I want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do extend a like. That is, of course, much appreciated. It really helps the channel grow as well. Don't forget to let me know as well in the comment section down below what team you want me to do next in this Who to Sign For series. And I'll see you for that next episode very soon.